The solar industry uh, has, has been a very exciting place to be over the last few years. Um, I was just reading a report from the ABARE that was written in 2009 um, that forecasted the, um, the national production of power in Australia to be uh, 4 terawatt hours by 2030. Um, but the APVI just came out with their report just a couple um, days ago, and we've already reached that number, and it's only 2013, so it's, or 2014 rather. So it's, um, it's a very exciting place to be. Well, the, the solar industry has been, been changing quite a lot um, over the past couple of years. Uh, for a while, it was just um, the, the modules themselves were growing in capacity. Uh, so you, you were dealing with a 185 or 190 watt module, um, and then in a matter of about a year, everyone's on to the 230 to now everyone's on the 250 watt module. Um, uh, inverter sizes have increased. increased um, maximum PowerPoint trackers, uh, dual maximum PowerPoint trackers on, on inverters. Um, just in general, the the industry is quickly moving um, to to keep up with what the trends are and. What's happening now is you see uh, people are moving away from the smaller installs. That 1.5 kilowatt install is not popular anymore. And now the average system size, I believe, in Australia is um, just over 5 kilowatts. So there's a general trend towards a larger system size. And um, I think the industry has just been keeping up with that. Well, I think initially the the large boom in solar came with the introduction of the state feed-in tariffs and the RET um, as well. So um, as the feed-in tariffs were introduced, the uptake um, it was very big. Um, not only that, but there was a, a five times multiplier for the creation of STCs with small systems. Um, and I think that fostered uh, a, a big uh, growth period within the solar industry. So for a very long time, residential was the, the key factor in the PV growth in Australia. Um, and now we're seeing that gradually each state is reducing and removing their feed-in tariffs. Um, I believe South Australia was the last one to do that, and they just did that recently. Um, and also the, the five times multiplier for the 1.5 kilowatt system is now gone as well. Um, and yeah, so I think because of that, uh, residential has flattened out a little bit. Um, it's still going. I think it still makes a lot of sense just because of the um, the current tariff rates for electricity, uh, and still can offset your system or your your electricity costs um, and be uh, helpful in that way. But because of the removal of the the um, the uh, fit and the and the rent reduction, um, there's a general trend towards commercial systems. So, in the past, I'd say um, maybe eight months to 12 months, uh, commercial systems have really been booming. Um, that uh, the the system size of just around 100 kilowatts or just under under kilowatts has been quite big recently. I think there's some really exciting things coming out. Um, there's been an advancements with uh, metal wrap-through cell technology. Um, there's some new semiconductor material that's being investigated. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's in the pipeline. But I think more realistically, what's going to be happening um, over the next couple of years are um, improvements in the manufacturing process, um, which will it, it may not reduce the cost of PV much further, um, but it'll help to make it more um, more stable and, and more su sustainable. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's that's probably where we're headed in, in the near in the near term at least. I think if there's a change to the RET, um, it will it'll slow the growth of the industry. Um, but it, I don't. I definitely don't think it'll stop it. I think that the industry is quite buoyant, um, and that we still have a bright future ahead of us. Um, I think that uh, if if they change the way it's structured, so that perhaps uh, an LGC or an STC is reduced in value, that's okay. It might set us back a little bit. 
but I think it's really dangerous to remove the RET entirely. Um, it is the, the method for um, regulating the industry, um, ensuring that systems are being installed appropriately. Um, it's the, the method that um, is used to ensure that people that are doing installs are accredited. Um, I think that's very important. So having the RET reviewed, I don't think is, um, uh, obviously you know, there, there are some aspects of it that might be a bit scary, but um, uh, I think the industry is strong enough um, that uh, we can move forward regardless of what the outcome is. I think that the, the industry has finally matured, um, or it's really showing signs of maturing. Um, when, we, when we first started out, or when the boom um, really started happening, um, there were a lot of issues, and um, there was a lot of different things in the media, um, but I think that the industry is consolidated. Um, I think that the installers are much more familiar with the products that they are using, um, and I think the products that are coming into um, into the market are much more focused, and um, we've found out what works and what doesn't. Um, so I think that in general, ac across the board, um, installations are um, are getting a lot better. We're working on something um, showing industry best practice when it comes to an installation, um, and we've been gathering photos from various installers and just seeing the work that they're producing compared to what was being done a year or two ago, um, I think that the industry's come a long way. So it's good to see that. Well, I'd like to see Australia be more of a leader in that regard, um, but I think the, the obvious answer there is Germany. Um, Germany's, you know, half a decade ahead of us. Um, uh, they, uh, they're basically uh, have grid saturation when it comes to PV. Um, they have new issues, um, I guess, with regard to, uh, to grid quality um, that now PV has introduced. Um, they're going to be one of the countries that is leading the way in terms of storage. Um, same with Japan. Japan has some really interesting case studies uh, with, uh, with PV and grid, grid storage. Um, and I think the U.S. as well. Um, but I think that there's an opportunity there. Um, I think that Australia has enough industry knowledge that when it moves to the next stage, um, which you know may very well be PV with battery storage, um, that we, there's a chance for us to lead the way there. And it would be good to see some policy introduced to, um, to encourage that. I think that um, PV with battery storage or even battery storage alone is going to become uh, very popular. Um, we've seen a lot of interest in it already for the past couple of years, um, but the battery price wasn't quite there yet. Um, so generally people will start to investigate a system whether they want to um, be fully self-sufficient or disconnect from the grid entirely. But once they get the battery pricing, um, it's just not quite there yet. But um, what's changing is the, the economics are making it more viable. Um, the, the electricity rates are going up, um, and as people try to reduce their demand to offset their costs, whether that be through um, energy efficiency or PV or any other measure, measure, the utilities are putting the rates up even more to compensate their, their um, or to offset uh, their losses. Um, so it's create this cycle, and um, that cycle will encourage people to be more, or take more control over their electricity bill. And one of the best ways to do that is with energy storage. Um, the battery prices are coming down. Um, there's a lot of research and development going on. Um, I think the big buzzword in the in industry right now is lithium. So. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of companies that are making the lithium ion, ion batteries. Um, I just read an article that uh, was talking about uh, Solar City and Tesla. So Solar City being the largest PV installer in the U.S. and Tesla, obviously the cars and the lithium ion batteries. They've teamed up to create a system, um, which the article called the utility's worst nightmare. Um, and I think that uh, in Australia that we'll see. Um, 
a lot of these systems being introduced into homes probably in the next three to five years um, where people are uh, really going to be taking control of their, their power bill and um, becoming self-sufficient.